everyone, and welcome to the Bold and Beautiful Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda, and I've titled this week's episode, The Pact. I had a guest lined up this week, but it fell through and he couldn't make it. But hopefully we'll get it worked out and we'll have him on soon. Before we get started, I just wanted to give you an update. My brother went to go get his surgery Tuesday, and when he got to the hospital, he became um, unstable, so to speak. His blood pressure was going crazy, and they couldn't get it leveled off. So, of course, they canceled the surgery because it's too dangerous to do the surgery because he's unstable they need to stabilize his blood pressure before they can do anything else so i just wanted to give you an update they are going to reschedule the surgery but i don't know exactly when okay enough with the sad talk let's move on let's get into the news the only news that i saw this week is that rena sofer who plays quinn got engaged this week to her ex-husband, which I thought was interesting. And she said, she said something like, you just never know when you're, when you're going to realize who the love of your life is. And she was really, really happy. So congratulations to her. And I wanted to tell you guys that I will be watching the Emmys tonight. So... Keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully, the bold and the beautiful win something. And hopefully, Jacqueline or Heather will win an Emmy. I got my fingers crossed. So, I have a comment from MK that I would like to read that is about last week's episode. Hi, Amanda. Thanks for the shout out in the episode. It was so special. My thoughts on the show. I am so done with Flo, seriously. Like you said, she has no spine. Couldn't agree more. I would never let Zoe talk to me like that. Who does she think she is? That's the, that's a good question. I love the chemistry between Don and Heather, but I don't want Katie to take Bill back. A lot of people feel that way. What he did was awful, and I have a feeling That when the baby truth comes out, it it might break up Brooke and Ridge. And then Brooke will be going right back to Bill. That's a good point. And then, of course, Katie would be devastated again. She also says, Thomas is such a rat. I went from having sympathy for the guy to totally hating him. What an awful thing to use your son and someone's grief and guilt. Ugh. I have a feeling that Liam will find out. Hopefully, Sally will tell him or Wyatt. I really hope so, too, MK. I am concerned for Sally. I really am. She needs to tell them the truth, like, now. And um, and then she writes, I want to see Thomas getting his ass kicked. Me, too. Me, too. That would be awesome. I also think that will make Wyatt and Sally fight. And maybe Flo and Wyatt will have a moment. Mm Mm-hmm. MK is predicting the future, is she not? I like Sally and Wyatt, but I also like Flo and Wyatt. And maybe Flo will tell Wyatt about her guilt, and then he will make the truth come out. That would be nice. Remember, even when Wyatt's mom, Quinn, kidnapped Liam, when Wyatt found out, He knew it would hurt his marriage, but he still got the truth out. I don't know why people always talk about Liam as nice. He is such a waffler. Wyatt is the really nice one and one of my favorite characters. Love MK. You know what? (laughs) I I don't even need to say anything because I agree with it all. I totally agree, MK. I totally agree. I think that this is a mess the whole thing is a mess so i can't wait to find out what happens thank you so much mk for your comment i really appreciate it 
And hopefully MK is going to be on the show soon. All right. That's all I got for this week, guys. So enough with the chit chat. Let's get to the recap. So it brings us into Monday, April the 29th. The show opens at Flo's apartment with Flo, Zoe, and Shauna. Flo is still laying on the floor unconscious, and Shauna is threatening to shoot Zoe with a taser. But Flo wakes up and she says, Mom, no, 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 stop. I know her. I know her. Then Flo explains that Zoe is Reese's daughter. Then Flo tries to rationally explain to both of them that she has to tell Hope the truth because it's the right thing to do. And poor Flo, she is a mess. Of course, Zoe and Shauna try to talk her out of telling the truth. Zoe points out that the cops won't care about her feelings and the Logans won't either. And they will hate her. And Shauna agrees. I do not. I think they're both wrong. When the Logans hear the whole story, there's no way that they will put Flo in jail. Especially because now she's related to them. No way. This is about Zoe and Shauna. Shauna wants to live the rich life. And she's afraid Flo will mess it up. And Zoe doesn't want to lose her cushy model job and her boyfriend. Now we head over to Forrester Creations with Brooke and Ridge. And Ridge, like MK, is happy that Katie said no to Bill's proposal. But before Brooke can argue, Hope walks in. And then, y'all are going to love this. Brooke has this bright idea that Hope should move into the big house with them until Liam comes home. You should have seen Ridge's face. His facial expressions were (laughs) amazing. He knows that this is a bad idea, but he can't say anything. I told you guys that he should have told Brooke the truth. I don't know why he hasn't told her. Maybe he thinks that she'll get all mad and kick Thomas out or something, but I don't think she would because of Douglas. And of course... Right when they're discussing this, Thomas walks in, and he thinks it's a great idea. I'm sure he does. So finally, Hope agrees, and Brooke is so happy, like she's jumping up and down almost. She's so happy that Hope is going to be at the big house with her. Then Hope asks Ridge if it's okay if she offers Flo a job at Forster. And Ridge is concerned that it might be uncomfortable for Hope, considering all she's been through. And I'm like, uh, why is no one thinking about Steffi? Because I, if I adopted a child, I wouldn't want to see the adopted mother every day. No way. But Hope assures him that It won't make her uncomfortable and that she really wants Flo to work there because she's family. Back at Flo's apartment, Flo has had enough of Zoe and Shauna. And she tells them that she's going to call Hope right now. Then she grabs her phone and as she grabs it, it starts ringing. And guess who it is? Hope. Hope has called to offer her a job at Forrester. And Flo is completely caught off guard. She's kind of speechless. She doesn't really know what to say. But she does agree to meet with Hope to discuss it. And of course, this just makes Shauna over the moon. Shauna pushes Flo to take the job. And pushes her and pushes her. But Zoe pushes her not to. So she's got Shauna telling her, take the job. And Zoe telling her, don't take the job. So... Poor Flo is confused, to say the least. Then Zoe informs them that they need to go back to Vegas where they belong. Rude. And Shauna is like, I don't think so. We aren't going anywhere. And that's how Monday ends. So that brings us in to Tuesday. The show opens at Forrester Creations in the executive office with Hope. She is working and all of a sudden the lights go out. 
completely dark. And the poor thing, it triggers a flashback of her delivering hope, delivering hope, for of her delivering Beth on Catalina. And I feel so sorry for her because she's obviously in distress. So a few minutes later, the lights come back on and Xander walks in and explains to Hope that they had a mechanic problem. Then, and that they had to shut down the power for a few minutes. Hope notices that he looks worried. And he admits he's a little worried about Zoe. Hope wants to help, of course, because she's a sweet person. And she feels an obligation to Zoe since her dad helped her through the worst night of her life. I was like, really? Ouch. Like, I, I, I feel like I just got slapped in the face. Like, wow. Xander wants to step up and be a good partner for Zoe, but she won't let him in. And Hope basically says, look, just give her some time and space. Because right now, she can't, she, maybe she can't tell you, but she probably will in her own time. Now, the next part, this is happening at the same time as the, uh, part we just, we just talked about with Hope and Xander. This is happening at the same time. So we just go across the hall to the side office. And Sally is freaking out because the power is out. And she's looking for Hope. But when the lights pop back on, she finds Thomas instead. And Thomas apologizes for the way he ended things with Sally back in the day. And Sally basically says, don't worry about it. It's water under the bridge. Just don't even think about it. And then Thomas tells Sally that he's decided he wants Hope to be Douglas's mother. And that basically he's going to do what he has to. So Sally reminds him again that she's married to Liam. And Thomas's answer is, Liam is unreliable and Hope knows it. And I'm like, wow, okay. Then he proceeds to tell Sally about the video that Amelia sent him and how he showed it to Hope. Sally is now getting upset because Thomas's behavior is appalling. And Thomas says, look, if my plan works, everyone gets what they want. And Sally quickly corrects him. You mean everyone gets what you want. And then Wyatt walks in, and he is surprised to see them together. He feels like he just walked in on something, but they insist that they were just talking about hope for the future. Then Thomas leaves, and Wyatt tells Sally, Look, if something is going on, especially with us or my family, you would tell me, right? Guys, she lied right to his face. I'm like, what are you doing, Sally? She tells him that Thomas just needed a friend, and that's all. There's nothing else going on. I'm like, oh, this is not good. This is bad. Back across the hallway into the executive office, Xander is gone, and Thomas finds Hope alone. Of course he does. And they start talking, and Hope admits to Thomas that she misses Steffi. Which surprises her a little, I think. Then she asked if she can tell him a secret. And I'm like, no, no. I'm like, you can't trust him. He's the enemy. And um, she tells him that she misses everyone. But she really misses Phoebe the most. And now she realizes it's because they are related. They're family. Now we head over to Flo's apartment with Shauna, Zoe, and Flo. And Shauna continues to try and convince Flo to take the job at Forrester. And Flo tries to explain that all of this is too much and it needs to end. And she doesn't think she could work every single day with Hope and and be happy. It, it would just, she can't take it. And she tells them that she should be happy, but instead she's miserable. And then Zoe starts her same crap about how they need to leave and go back to Vegas, etc., etc. And Shauna informs Zoe that won't be happening, so they need to find a way to help Hope 
and keep everyone out of prison. Even though that's exactly what her father deserves. I see, this is what Shauna says, I see you want us to leave and you want Flo to go back to work at the casino while you stay here and live the high life. I don't think so. Then Zoe claims that she cares about Flo and she doesn't want Flo to pay for Reese's sins. All right. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. No. No, no, no. Zoe cares about Zoe. Again, she doesn't want to lose her cushy job at Forrester. They are trying everything to keep Flo quiet. Even guilting her by using her dead dad. Shauna says, your father would want you to have this life. He would want you to have all of this. So you have to keep your mouth shut. And that's how Tuesday ends. So that brings us in to Wednesday. The show opens at Forrester Creations in the executive office with Hope and Thomas. Hope is explaining her connection to Phoebe. And now she gets it because they're family. Again, we've heard this 50,000 times. Like, we get it. Thomas wants Hope to protect her heart a little. Basically, he says not to get too attached because she's not Phoebe's mother. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Like, Hope didn't know that. Now we head to Paris. And this with Liam and Amelia. And this really pissed me off. It kind of blew my mind. So Liam is talking to Amelia. And he's saying how he really missed Kelly and Phoebe. And how, you know, it's good to see them and blah, blah, blah. And then, sticking her nose into other people's business, Amelia tells Liam, Oh, the girls love having you here, and so does Steffi. She goes on and on about how happy the girls are with with him there, etc. And how Steffi still loves him. And I'm like, excuse me? Stop. You're the nanny. And if Steffi heard her say any of this, she would be livid. I'm like, oh my gosh, she has some nerve. So then she continues. She is pushing Liam to be with Steffi and the girls. And she even says, this was way over the line. She even says, don't get me wrong. I love working for you. But you should be here with Steffi and the girls, not me. And I'm like, what the F? She is major overstepping big time. I just could not get over this. Then Liam gets a call from Hope. And she's just updating him on what's going on and how she offered Flo a job. And she's waiting to see if she's going to take it. And they're just chit-chatting. And then they both say how much they love and miss each other. And I'm like, I don't know. It just blew my mind. I can't believe that she would get involved. And then say, you know, I know you love Hope, but you should be here with Steffi and the girls. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Now we head over to Forrester Creations in the side office with Wyatt and Sally. And Wyatt wants to to take Sally and Flo out to dinner. But Sally is too busy with work. So Wyatt wants to know if he can just go without her and she can meet them later for dessert. And Sally is not happy about that. She's like, "Uh, excuse me, you're going to go without me? And then Wyatt admits that she's been working too much. Coming home super late every night. And he admits that he's not happy that she decided to stay at Forrester. Because he put a lot on the line with his father for her. And then she just threw it away. And didn't even discuss it with him. Really. She kind of just surprised him. And Sally apologizes. But Wyatt says that's not necessary. He was just answering honestly. No secrets, remember? Then things get heated 
because Sally wants to know what's going on with Wyatt and Flo. Do they meet up on a regular basis? Have they been to dinner multiple times? And then Wyatt gets defensive, which is never a good sign. And he stresses the fact that they're just friends and that Sally is being jealous or insecure or something. And Sally is like, you know what? Whatever. I have work to do. Enjoy your dinner. And she storms out. But she doesn't realize that she left her phone. And her phone goes off and she it's a text. So Wyatt picks up the phone and looks at it. And of course, it's from Thomas. And it says, you didn't tell Wyatt anything, did you? Question mark. Remember, it stays between us. I'll be honest. I'm on both sides of this argument. Because... In Sally's defense, if my husband wanted to have dinner with his ex without me, or he wanted to have dinner with his ex at all, I would go ballistic. I would have a problem with that. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm the weird one, but I would have an issue with that. So I get where Sally's coming from. But I also agree with Wyatt. What Sally did, staying at Forrester, and not taking his offer, and then not telling him or discussing it with him, just kind of like springing it on him, that was not right either. Because Wyatt went through a lot to try to get her company back for her, so I feel like he has a right to be upset also. So this turns into a heated fight, not good. And now Wyatt thinks, what the heck does this text mean? So now we head over to Flo's apartment with Shauna, Flo, and Zoe. And Flo cannot believe that her mom and Zoe want her to keep the secret. She doesn't want to go to work every single day and see Hope. It's just too much. So Zoe Zoe and Shauna want Flo to just forget what happened with Reese. Really? Really? Just forget that you helped steal a baby? Really? Of course, Flo says she can't do that. She's not like them. She can't just forget everything. And then there's a knock at the door, and it's Wyatt. So Shauna and Zoe run and hide in the bedroom. Wyatt stopped by to check on her, and she tells him about Hope's job offer, and that she's not sure if she's going to take it. Of course, Wyatt tries to talk her into taking it, and she tells him that she's just not sure about it. Then Wyatt tells her what happened with Sally earlier. And that Sally is very perceptive. And she knows that Wyatt has been spending time with Flo. And thinking about and thinking about her. And he also thinks that Sally is keeping secrets from him. And Flo is staring at him and he's like, it's true though because I have been thinking about you. And then Flo grabs him and kisses him. But she realizes what she's doing and she stops and she apologizes. And then he grabs her and kisses her back. And I was like, oh no, Wyatt, not cool. So Shauna walks out of the bedroom and interrupts them. And then Wyatt is embarrassed and so is Flo. (laughs) And Wyatt asks Flo to dinner and she accepts. And then he leaves. And once again... Zoe and Shauna come out of the bedroom. They start guilt tripping her into keeping the secret. So they're going on and on. You're going to lose Wyatt. You're going to lose this. They're just going on and on. And I think Flo's just over it. So they all put their hand in and they make a pact to never ever say anything about what happened to Beth. And they all put their hand in. And I'm thinking, what are we, 12? This is weird. (laughs) This is weird, guys. I thought that this was weird to me. And that's how Wednesday ends. So that brings us in to Thursday. The show opens at Forrester Creations in the executive office with Ridge, Hope, and Brooke. Hope is telling them that Flo may not take the job because it might be awkward for her you know, because of of Steffi and seeing her every day. And I'm like, mm, no one's thinking about what Steffi thinks. Brooke and Ridge assure Hope that they'll make sure 
Flo is not uncomfortable. And Ridge is actually really excited to meet her. Now we head over to Flo's apartment with Flo and Shauna. Shauna and Flo are getting ready to go to Forrester Creations. And Shauna reminds Flo that they made a pact. And she agreed to it. Like she forgot. Really? Shauna comes across as being very excited and very happy that Flo is going to be rich. And I guess she assumes that means she will be too. I want to like Shauna, but it's really hard. The way she's acting and the things she's saying, it's very hard. Over at Forrester Creations in the side office with Zoe and Xander. He got tickets for them, but she's not as excited as he thought she would be. Xander wants to know what's up, what's going on, because he knows there's something wrong. And she dodges the question and kisses him. But that, that doesn't make him happy. He wants to know why she's upset, because she's keeping something from him, and he wants to know why. Because it's obvious that something's going on. Zoe assures him that she is okay, and it's nothing to worry about. But he don't buy it. And she's like, don't worry, okay? I got it. And he's just looking at her like, mm, she's lying to me. So he wants to know if it involves her dad and if she's covering for him. And I'm like, wow, Xander is perceptive today. Then Zoe says, of course, he's always in trouble. But she wants to forget about her dad and everything else. And she just wants to move forward. Because she doesn't want to lose everything. It, especially Xander. She wants to just forget about her dad and move on. Across the hall in the executive office, Shauna and Flo have arrived for their meeting with Brooke, Hope, and Ridge. Shauna is overly excited to meet Ridge. She's a huge fan, apparently, and she's smiling and giggling and talking nonstop while Flo just stands there quietly. Hope notices, and she asks if Flo is okay. And then Shauna's like, oh, well, you know, I'm sorry. I'm taking all the attention here, you know. And Ridge is like, oh, it's so good to meet you, and he gives her a big hug. And they all go on and on about how thankful they are for what she's done for the family. And she's such a sweet person, etc., etc. And how much they want her to work there. They all say they want her to work there. It's, it would be a great opportunity, etc. And it's obvious that Flo feels very uncomfortable. So Hope expresses that she doesn't want to pressure her. But honestly, that's exactly what they're doing. She doesn't want to pressure her, but she will be there for her no matter what. And that Hope really wants her to work with her own hope for the future. Will she do it? And then it's a close-up on Flo, and she's contemplating. She doesn't answer. And that's how Thursday ends. So that brings us into Friday, May the 3rd. The show opens at Forrester Creations with Flo, Shauna, Brooke, Ridge, and Hope. They claim there's no pressure, but then they put Flo right on the spot. Will you work here, Flo, please? And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is getting kind of old. They're going on and on and on. But your family and da 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 da. And I refuse to write it down because it's literally the same exact thing they said yesterday. So, finally, Flo agrees to take the job. And Hope is so, so happy. Then, Shauna tells them that it's Flo's birthday today. And, of course, they make a big fuss over it. Flo doesn't feel like she deserves all of this. But Hope assures her that she does. Then, Hope has to leave because she promised to hang out with Douglas. So, Shauna also excuses herself because she needs to make a phone call. And Flo thanks Ridge and Brooke for the opportunity. Of course, they say, you're welcome. 
no, you know, it's no big deal, your family. And then they explain to Flo who Douglas is and how he recently lost his mother and that his mother is actually Wyatt's cousin. So, of course, she's like, oh, I'm so sorry, and she feels bad about it. Now we head over to Brooke's house with Thomas and Douglas. And he, ugh. Thomas is trying to call Steffi. She doesn't answer, so he leaves a message. He wants her to send him a photo of the four of them and make sure Liam is in it, too. Wow. Captain Obvious. Then, Douglas and Thomas are going to draw together and Douglas wants to draw cars but Thomas tells him hey I've got an idea let's draw hope a picture first and I'm like this guy is getting worse and worse Thomas is disgusting okay because he tells Douglas that hope could be his mommy if they treat her right I mean getting a little boy's hopes up is are you kidding me So, uh, then, I'm just, like, shocked because he's manipulating his own son. Then, he sends Steffi a text. Hey, don't forget to send the pic. Douglas is begging to see his cousins. And I'm like, wow, wow. He is a psycho just like his mom, Taylor. Back at Forrester Creations with Brooke and Flo... Brooke has to run to a meeting. So she leaves Flo alone and guess what her crazy mom does? Shauna comes into the office wearing one of Ridge's designs. And I'm like, wow, that is some nerve. She didn't even ask first. She just took it and put it on. And she's dancing around and laughing and she's She's super happy, and so Flo is also happy and excited that she has a new life and a new family, and they are both just gushing. And I'm thinking, wow, (laughs) wow. So back at Brooke's house, Hope arrives, and Thomas comes downstairs without a shirt, by the way, claiming he just got out of the shower. I roll. That's convenient. Then he tells Hope, That she will have to hang out with him because Maya took Douglas and Lizzie to the park. I found that to be rude, okay? You know that Hope is coming to spend time with Douglas. She left work and then you purposely let him go to the park. This this guy, wow. So then Hope sees the picture that Douglas drew and she loves it, of course. It's got a big heart on it. It's really cute. And then Thomas starts saying how amazing Hope is and how he loves how she loves Douglas and etc. It's obvious that this is making Hope uncomfortable. Then, of course, Steffi sends him a picture of the four of them together. And of the first thing he does is show Hope. Then he says that she was right She should be with him, and Liam should be with Steffi and the girls. And that taking off her ring was the right thing to do. Then he goes on to try to talk Hope into leaving Liam and being with him and Douglas. And I'm like, wow. He's showing his cards really soon. So then... He tries to convince her that she needs to let Liam go because she should be with him. Then he grabs her and kisses her. And she is so caught off guard, she immediately pushes him away. And she is shook. She is completely, just completely freaking out. Like, of all the things, she did not expect that. And that's how Friday ends. So that brings us to the end of the soap week on a cliffhanger, which you know I love. So let's break this down. Let's analyze this. Thomas is gross, period. 
I hope his plan backfires. I hope it backfires so hard. I hope Liam finds out. I hope Brooke finds out. I hope Wyatt finds out. I hope they just take care of him. Now, let's talk about Shauna for a second. Shauna is so happy and excited to live the good life, so to speak. No matter what the cost to Flo. That's why I'm having a hard time liking her. That's why I'm having a hard time being on her side. Because she's so caught up in in the celebrity and the glamour and everything that she just isn't even considering what it's doing to Flo to try to hide the secret. And she said that they would come up with a way to help Hope and stay out of jail. But so far, her answer to that is just not to say anything. Thanks, Shauna. Next, I want to talk about Steffi. Just really quick. It concerns me because no one is concerned that Flo working there may not be comfortable for Steffi. I think she should have at least been consulted. I don't know how she's going to react. But I cannot wait to see how Taylor reacts when she finds out that Phoebe is a Logan. I cannot wait. Next, I want to talk about two people at the same time because they're making the same exact mistake. Ridge is making a huge mistake by not telling Brooke what's going on with Thomas. And Sally is making the same exact mistake by not telling Wyatt what Thomas is up to. This, I am very worried that this will affect their relationships. Brooke and Ridge, they're pretty solid. They've been through a lot. They've been married a hundred times. Like, they might get past this because in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal. But Sally and Wyatt are a brand new couple. And secrets and lies and covering things up is not a good way to start a relationship. Okay? I don't see this ending well for Sally. Last, but definitely not least, Zoe and Xander. Zoe is getting on my nerves because I don't like that she's claiming she cares about Flo so much. I don't buy it. I don't buy it one bit. And it also bothers me that Zoe does not seem guilty at all. Very little, if any. And it bothers me because Zoe should be feeling like Flo does. She should be gutted, just riddled with guilt, but she's not. And that bothers me. Because what does that say about her and her character? You know, maybe Xander will figure it out. And maybe he won't be able to keep that in. Maybe that'll be too much for his conscience. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see, I guess. But I sure do wish that the best storyline would come out. Because it's getting harder and harder to watch Hope go through these things when you know it's not necessary. Like, she doesn't have to. They made their point, and I feel like they need to let the truth come out, because I feel like that will also spark a lot of storylines. So that brings us to the end of the episode. I hope you guys have a great week. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I very much appreciate it, and please get in touch. I want to hear what you guys think about what is going on right now. You can get in touch with me at theboldandbeautifulpodcast.com. I'm also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Again, thank you for listening. I'll be back in your ears next week. Until then, bye guys.